Hi, I'm Brian Groves, the city's communications manager. And today we're talking about the proposed sidewalk ordinance with Planning and Development Services Director John James. John, thanks for being with us. Sure, thanks for having me. So let's talk about sidewalks. For starters, what is being considered and why? Well, the uh, current city ordinance has about two sentences about when sidewalks are required, and so it's really decided on a case-by-case -case basis with, with each development project. And so I think staff, as well as the development community, uh, would rather have more clear direction on when sidewalks should be required and shouldn't be required. And so that's the main impetus for this, is to basically answer that question and get city council uh, to tell us you know, when, when will we require sidewalks and when won't we, so that it doesn't have to be a, a debate each time a new development project comes up uh, and, and decided case by case. So when you say ordinance, I think people kind of, you know, freak out a little bit. So is that for certain areas of town? Is it for certain developments or is it for the entire city? Well, it's for the entire city, but it's only for new development. So nothing in this ordinance would require an existing development or existing home to have to go out and build a sidewalk. It's only uh, in new uh, residential neighborhoods that are being built, uh, new commercial development, uh, redevelopment of you know commercial sites. Uh, so it again, it wouldn't. If you're not making any improvements, doing anything on your property, nothing would be triggered. And in fact, it wouldn't be triggered from things like remodeling and, and things like that either. Uh, it would just be major development on a property. That, that doesn't stop people necessarily from if they would want to put a sidewalk in at their house, they could still still do that, right? That doesn't affect that at all. Oh, absolutely. I mean, anybody could go out and put a sidewalk uh, today if they wanted to. Um, yeah. Would this, uh, would this give any rules or stipulations on what they would have to do when it comes to installing a sidewalk? Or is that, that's already probably in place, I guess? Yeah, there are already standards in place for if you're going to put a sidewalk on a property, you know, how far back from the street it has to be, how wide it has to be, the thickness of the concrete. All of that is already in city's design standards for sidewalks. Uh, because, we, like we, I said, we do have um, certain developments where sidewalks are being put in today. Um, but then others that I think staff would recommend in the future should have sidewalks but, but aren't being put in today. So yeah, we, we do have standards in place for those. So what are, what are the benefits to having sidewalks in, in our community? And I realize that that's a, a, that's a broad term because you have residential, you have Knickerbocker and Sherwood Way. So what are some of the benefits of having sidewalks in all areas of the community? Well, in general, it's a term we call walkability. Um, We've seen from surveys just around the country, uh, but also in, in cities around Texas, that uh, people place an importance on walkability. Uh, people would like the ability to, to walk safely, whether it's kids walking to school, um, uh, a, just a person walking down to the corner store, uh, or just walking for exercise in your neighborhood. Having that place out of the street, off, up on a sidewalk, uh, we know it's much safer, uh, and that's desirable for a lot of people. So you mentioned surveys a second ago. So have we done surveys where we've asked citizens what they've thought of? If so, what, what did they say when it comes to sidewalks in San Angelo? We have. The, uh, we've worked with uh, Angelo State to do a couple of different surveys over the last 10 years um, and ask a lot of different questions, but it really boils down to uh, the majority of people would like to see more sidewalks in the community uh, and most would uh, have expressed that they would be willing to pay uh, for those sidewalks, whether it's uh, the city putting in sidewalks with street projects, which we do oftentimes, uh, or also requiring new development to put in sidewalks as part of that new development. So how is it decided when sidewalks should be on both sides of the, the, the street or just one side or the other? How, how is that decided? Is that up to the builder or the city? Or No, in most cases, sidewalks are required where we require them on both sides of the street. Um, as we looked at other cities and how they do it, uh, that's the most common. There are a handful of cities around the state that only require sidewalks on one side of the street or the other. But when you see sidewalks on only one side of the street, that typically means that that developer has developed and put in that sidewalk. The sidewalk on the other side of the street would go in when that side of the property develops. Gotcha. So we've talked about the benefits. We've talked about people wanting sidewalks. What are some downsides of requiring sidewalks here in San Angelo? Well, the big one that we hear uh, from the development community is cost. Uh, obviously, putting in a concrete sidewalk across the front of a property uh, does cost money, uh, and so that would add to the cost of a commercial development. It would add to the cost of buying a home. Um, now, I think we've done some, some of the math on that, and uh, it's not a huge cost. It is a, a substantial cost, 
um, if you look at, at the cost of putting in a sidewalk, uh, but in the scheme of, of building a new $150,000, $200,000 home, uh, it's a very small uh, drop in the bucket. And, and our numbers would suggest that it would add maybe uh, 10 or $12 to the cost of your monthly mortgage, uh, which uh, on top of the, the regular cost uh, is, is not a huge increase. But again, that is an increased cost. Uh, there would be a concern from the development community that that would price some people out of homes. Just that that marginal cost increase would uh, maybe keep some buyers away uh, by adding, you know, four or five thousand dollars to the cost of a home. So earlier you you kind of briefly touched on what other communities you know the other communities have require sidewalks. When it comes to communities our size or comparable uh, cities, what are they doing when regards to re requiring sidewalks? Yeah, most cities around the state uh, do require sidewalks in new development. Um, we looked at the 50 largest cities in the state, which basically all cities over 75,000 population, um, and there are only two that don't require sidewalks in new residential neighborhoods, uh, that being us, San Angelo, and Waco. Um, and so 48 other cities of the largest cities in the state, including some of our peer cities around Midland, Odessa, Lubbock, Wichita Falls, all require sidewalks in most new development. So obviously there's been some discussion in the community about the this proposed sidewalk ordinance. Is there any anything you want to clear up in regards to maybe some misconceptions that are out there about the, the proposed ordinance? Yeah, I think there is some confusion out there. One of them I touched on earlier that uh, if, you know, if you're out there living in your house today, this would not require you to go out and put in a sidewalk. So you have to be developing new property basically for the sidewalk ordinance uh, requirement to kick in. Um, some other concerns about uh, maintenance of the sidewalk. Um, it, it is a responsibility of a homeowner or business owner to maintain the sidewalk in front of their property, but that's already the case today. Um, and then some concerns out there about, um, uh, you know, if somebody trips on your sidewalk and liability, and I think we've answered most of those concerns, but I know some of those are, are still floating around out there. I think one of the other misconceptions uh, that I'd like to address is um, the idea of the property owner being responsible, you know, sidewalks are not like streets that have to be maintained and resurfaced and repaired, you know, every six or eight years. Uh, a well-built sidewalk can last for decades without ever having to have any uh, maintenance done on it whatsoever. So uh, I think there's a concern out there from homeowners that if they buy a house in a neighborhood with sidewalks, well, then that's an added burden and expense to them. And, and while, yes, they do have the responsibility, uh, that's a very minor cost of maintenance that they, a, a homeowner could be in a home for 30 or 40 years and not ever have to spend a dime on, on repairing a sidewalk. So you're talking about repairing a sidewalk and the life of a sidewalk. It, when it comes to building a sidewalk, is it concrete and that's it, or is there other material that someone could build a sidewalk with that is um, appropriate or uh, okay in the proposed sidewalk ordinance? It's largely uh, concrete. It's a standard design, concrete, uh, four or five foot width. Um, we have worked with some properties, for example, a commercial property that has an asphalt parking lot. Uh, as long as that can be constructed to meet accessibility standards, we have in a few cases allowed that. Uh, particularly where there's an existing uh, parking lot. But in new construction, it's largely a, a standard concrete sidewalk. So if people want more information, because obviously, again, ordinance, and, and there, there, there's a lot with that. So where can people go for more information? We do have a page on the city's website that has more information, some frequently asked questions, uh, as well as a copy of the draft ordinance that uh, people can find there on the website. So moving forward, um, what is, what's the next step, and how and will this be decided? Well, we've been working for probably a couple of years now on, on drafts of this, working with the development community, sending out to other community groups. So we think we have a draft ordinance that's, that's ready to move forward. So the next step will be taking it to the city's planning commission. Uh, they'll be having a special meeting in November uh, to discuss this. Uh, they might discuss it over a couple of meetings, but once they've made a recommendation, it will go to the city council uh, for a final decision. And both meetings are open to the public um, and people can come and, and share their thoughts whether they're for it or against it, correct? Absolutely. We would encourage anyone who has an interest to express, uh, come out and uh, there will be public hearings. All the meetings are open to the public. Uh, also, we would take by email, uh, phone call if you want to express your opinion and can't come to the meeting. Uh, we would definitely uh, keep track of all of those comments as well. So you mentioned this has been something that y'all have been working on for a few years now. 
What what drives that? What what's pushing the, um, the the proposed sidewalk ordinance? Well, a couple things. One, the city has adopted plans over the past uh, 15, 20 years. Uh, one of the goals of that plan is to increase walkability um, and, and expand where we include sidewalks uh, in new development. Uh, the other piece, as I mentioned, is um, that. Right now, our current ordinances aren't real clear, and so whether or not sidewalks are in a new development is really decided on a case-by-case -case basis uh, based on a staff recommendation and the planning commission as each development case comes forward. Uh, and so we would like a little more clarity, both for staff but also for the development community so they know in these circumstances a sidewalk will be required and in these they won't. Um, and so everybody is on, on the same page from the get-go. Thank you for joining us today. For more information on this proposed sidewalk ordinance, visit our website.